talking about the things that matter most to you, Catholic Women Now. Welcome to Catholic Women Now here on Iowa Catholic Radio. I'm Julie Nelson. Good morning. I'm Chris Magruder. How are you? I'm great. It's always, <laughs> you know what? I really do truly enjoy looking. I look forward to this time with you and our shows and the I know. Guests. After 10 years, you're not tired of me. No. <laughs> No, you're not going away. Well, you're I, not I going missed away. you while you were gone, so that says something. Yeah, and I missed you all last year. <laughs> I was like, part of the time was like, what would Chris do? What would Chris say? <laughs> I'm glad you missed me. That's good. I thought maybe you guys would forget about me after a while, but you had some great guest hosts, and Emily Schmidt in particular did mm-hmm. just a nice job. It was nice. Yeah, yeah it was yeah. good, but yeah, I'm glad you're back. Yeah. I'm glad you're back. Well, so. should we start with a Hail Mary? Let's do. Okay. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. amen. In the name Father, the Father, and the Son, and the Son, Holy and Spirit, Spirit. Amen. amen. Well, you want to tell us about our guest today, Chris? Yes, we have Rena Connis Teske. Am I saying that right, Rena? Yes. Okay, she is actually a friend of ours who was in El Salvador when Os- Saint Oscar Romero was assassinated. And so we're going to talk a little bit about um, who he was and what her experience was living there. I know that when I was young, actually, sophomore in high school, I had a Spanish teacher who actually was a sister living in El Salvador when a lot of, um, you know, the uprising happened when there were four nuns that were murdered. Yes. Just a lot of different, very um, frightening things, you know. And But Rena was young at the time. So she's going to tell us what it was like to live there. Um, Her family actually knew St. Oscar Romero. And so we're going to just talk a little bit about that today. I mean, you know, he lived at a time where there was a lot of difficulty, um, a lot of kind of anti-God, communistic things, socialistic things happening in their country. It was a civil war going on. Yeah, and we see a little bit of what was happening then happening in our country. So I think it's, um, I think the timing is good and a good time to lean on him for prayer. Yes, and he has some wonderful, beautiful quotes that we want to share with you today, mm-hmm. too, about uh, mm-hmm. uh, going through this and, mm-hmm. and uh, seeing all this tra- yes. travesty that was happening. Yeah. So Saint to give us hope. To give us yeah. hope. So St. Oscar Romero, pray for us in our show today. That's right. When we Before we get started, though, truth, beauty, and goodness, okay. Julie, tell me yours. Oh, you want me to go first? Sure. Okay. <laughs> so I um, found this uh, article in National Catholic Register, and it is about Laura Horn. Uh-huh. who is the wife of Trent Horn, who is oh, yeah. the Catholic apologist at Catholic Answers. And Laura has got quite a sense of humor. So she's got a YouTube channel now, and Trent stars with her, and they do these sh- short three-minute videos. Catholic humor are just taking the obvious things of our Catholic life and just putting it into a humorous video, acting it out. Like, I watched one. <laughs> you know, you see some of yourself in it, and you yeah. just have to laugh. Yes. And, and yeah. she, she pokes a little fun. It's all good. Good fun. It's yes. nothing, yeah. d- you know, shameful or you know, insulting or anything like mm-hmm. that. But you chuckle because, yeah, that's me, <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> so she has done a really nice job, and uh, he helps her with it, and he edits it with her, and so. So the, the beauty of just taking the supernatural and the natural, bringing them together. It's the humor. Yeah. You know, and Archbishop yeah. Fulton Sheen wrote about humor, and he said humor is actually a sign of humility. Because when we can see ourselves as we really are and can laugh and not take offense in in the reality of life. Yeah. You know, interestingly, that's a little bit of what my truth and beauty and goodness is about is kind of the truth of our faith. Um, You know, teaching us to, like you said, not take offense. Today I was um, in traffic. I didn't expect, you know, there to be a line of traffic to get to the studio um, there was a road that was shut down, and so I there was a space open for me to kind of move over from one lane to get into the op- the lane I needed to be in. And so I, I scooched over, and the lady did not want me to come into that open space. She was honking at me. She was angry, and I thought, normally I would just want to honk right back and be a little bit grumpy, but instead I remembered to pray. Yeah. Pray for her. You don't know what she's going you through. You don't know what she's going yes. through. And I think yes. that's a big yes. aha yes. right So there. not taking offense is something that I've learned yes. in the last few years in my faith. Praise the Lord. You know what right. I mean? That's that's the goodness of our Catholic faith. And I've, that's a lesson I've had to learn along mm-hmm. the way, too, is not mm-hmm. to take it personal. Yeah. So personal yes, or offensive. Yes, exactly. Is like because their intention and what's going on in their life is not what we think perceive it to be. So. Yes. But anyway... That's great stuff. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about Archbishop Romero, a saint, Archbishop Mm -hmm. Romero. Um, So he actually, his feast day was back in March. 
And um, that's when I, I kind of got the idea. Um, I had a friend say, oh, I heard this woman come speak at St. Boniface, Rena Teske, and you should have her on your show. And I'm like, oh, we, you know, we just celebrated his feast today. So yeah, let's learn a little bit more about it. So um, we just want to welcome you in, Rena. Welcome to Catholic Women Now. Thank you for having me here. Uh-huh. <laughs> what a blessing. So how old were you when um, he was assassinated in your country? I was 26 years old. Okay. Wow. Were we you, were 26 when he was assassinated? Yes. Okay, I so thought were you were a little girl. Okay. Were you living in? And um, I was yes. living in San Salvador. And uh, that particular day, we had gone visit a, um, a relative of us very near to the place that he was assassinated. And um, we heard immediately, it's like the whole country stopped. And uh, it was in the evening because of the war, people would just go home early and it was getting dark. So it was like a ghost town by the time all of this was developing. And uh, it was a very sad night. Oh, yeah. so it's so like the- she's referring to the war, the civil war that was happening in El Salvador at the time that had started the year before in 1979. Yes. Um, St. Oscar Romero was murdered during saying mass, preparing the gifts, correct, in 1980. 1980 mm-hmm. at a hospital that he uh, was very fond of mm-hmm. and gave mass every day. Okay. Uh-huh. He had a real heart for the poor. And yes. Impoverished. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Since, uh, I remember him since I was a little girl because I am from the area that he is or he was born at. Okay. So we are both from San Miguel. And uh, so I I knew him when I was a little girl oh. and I used to go to his mass at the San Miguel Cathedral. Mm. And uh, that's how I remember him giving the mass at that time in Latin. Mm -hmm. And uh, my dad would take us every Sunday to church. And because he was a very good friend with my dad. Oh, Oh, wow. Little did you know you were going, you were among a saint, right? Exactly. But uh, his actions uh, when he was uh, so young uh, would prove what he was, his faith was, you know, Mm -hmm. where his faith was. Yeah. So always uh, about the poor yeah. Yeah, yeah. Now I had a, I had read about him having kind of a, a change of heart where he was transformed from kind of this timid defender of non-controversial virtues into this really, this champion of faith and champion of the people and the poor. And um, one of the things that this, this was one of my favorite quotes that he said was the word of God is like a light of the sun. It illumines beautiful things, but also things which we would rather not see. So he kind of came into a time where he was trying to ignore some of the stuff that he was seeing around him. I mean, he had several people. Well, you guys were seeing murder happening in the streets at that point. Yes. And, you know, I know he wanted to not see that, but then eventually he he just became a champion for telling the truth about, you know, he started calling people out. Yes. Yeah. Yes, exactly right. Oh, uh, wow. Well, actually, we're coming to the end of our first break here, or we're coming up against our first break here. So you're listening to Chris Magruder and Julie Nelson on Catholic Women Now on the Iowa Catholic Network. We're talking to Rena Teske about St. Oscar Romero. And we come back, we are going to hear a little bit more about Father St. Oscar Romero, who's actually an archbishop, and um, what was happening in El Salvador, um, what he is the patron saint of, et cetera, et cetera. So stay tuned. We'll be back in a moment. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio comes from the Society of St. Vincent de Paul, motivated by a sense of compassion for those struggling with poverty, loneliness, illness, family problems, and many other difficulties. Our Catholic faith inspires us to action, sustains our commitment, and challenges us to become more like Christ. For Vincentians, every encounter with our fellow man is an opportunity to share a spark of the divine fire as we walk with them in their daily challenges. To support their mission of helping others and help themselves, visit svdpdsm.org. Support for programming provided by Trappist Caskets, a work of the monks of New Mallory Abbey in Piasta, Iowa. Embracing an honest approach to death can more readily affirm the real meaning of life. Trappist Caskets and urns are made in the prayerful environment of the monastery using Iowa-grown wood from the Abbey's sustainable forest. Each casket and urn is blessed by a monk. Quietly laboring with their hands for 175 years, the monks offer workmanship at the pinnacle of woodworker's craft, available for immediate delivery or as a part of a pre-planning program. Learn more at trappistcaskets.com. 
Support for Iowa Catholic Radio provided by the Knights of Columbus, Foreman and Pfeiffer Agencies, specializing in life insurance, long-term care insurance, disability income insurance, and retirement annuities. Are you looking for a career? We are in search of men with an entrepreneurial spirit and a strong desire to live Catholic values. Knights of Columbus is seeking field agents to serve throughout the state of Iowa. Visit kofc.org slash careers. The Knights of Columbus need you now, and one day you might need the Knights. That's kofc.org slash careers to learn more. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio is provided by the Sarah Vocations Ministry, including the St. Sarah Club of Des Moines and the Sarah Club of Council Bluffs. Sarah is an apostolate of the Worldwide Catholic Church dedicated to fostering and supporting priesthood and religious vocations. Sarans strive to accomplish their mission through prayer, fellowship, and service to the bishop, priests, sisters, and all in religious formation, and in doing so to increase their own holiness. Learn more at joinsarah.org, join s-e-r-r-a.org. Thank you, Sarans, for your support of Iowa Catholic Radio. Welcome back to Catholic Women Now here on Iowa Catholic Radio, where we're speaking with Rena Konosteski, who uh, family knew uh, St. Uh, Oscar Romero, uh, the Archbishop of uh, San Salvador, who was assassinated in 1980 during the Civil War. We're talking about his life and Rena's experience with him and knowing him. And um, Chris, you mentioned earlier that he had a metanoia experience, mm-hmm. and um, after that, really was dedicated to helping the, the people who are being persecuted and, and, and murdered. And I found it very interesting that on the Sunday before he was assassinated, he made a heartfelt plea out loud to, to the authorities, to everybody. And that the quote that he said, it was about stop the killing, right? Yeah. And this he was just, not timid at all. So no, he was not and his he just, timid self you anymore. Know, it's not, he just didn't say stop the killing. Right. He said, I want to make a special appeal to soldiers, national guardsmen and policemen. Each of you is one of us. The peasants you kill are your own brothers and sisters. When you hear a man telling you to kill, remember God's words, thou shall not kill. No soldier is obliged to obey a law contrary to the law of God, in the name of God, in the name of our tormented people, I beseech you, I implore you, in the name of God, command you to stop the repression. Wow, what a bold statement and just, conviction right and that there. was on the radio publicly wasn't it yes wow yeah. and then it was two days later that he, he was killed that he yeah. was killed for that but he is he had such a heartfelt like you said for the people and wanted to see a difference and, and it's really true how that is such a crazy thing how you can be christians and still do this kind mm-hmm. of killing mm-hmm. yeah exactly especially um when the 90 percent population in el salvador is catholic and uh, I knew people that their kids had to go and serve to the military, and they were Catholic. But what against their will? Against, mm-hmm. Against their yes, wow. exactly. Oh, and but, I know that it was it was a pretty gruesome sight. I mean, there would be dead bodies hanging from from lights, and and in the streets, it was streets, it was common anywhere. Any morning that you would go to work, you would, would find women. Uh, naked and they had cut their breast and just throwing in the streets. Oh. So that was that was, was their like, terror. They were trying to terrorize exactly. and scare everybody, right? Oh. Exactly. Yeah. And so you lived in fear all the time. Uh, at night you couldn't go out because of that, and you know you just uh, were always on eggshells yes. yeah yes oh goodness. so after he died you know you talked about how sad it was and everything so did the people find a place to find hope and joy or hope and to persevere in what was going on what happened after that in the, uh, san salvador well it was uh very sad uh, there had been a, like you said mentioned the nuns were killed so it was uh we didn't have any hope because they didn't respect anybody. They would kill anybody. So, you know, the praying kept going, and there were many people. He, they killed Father Romero, but there were thousands of people that came and lived because of that. Okay. So that was an inspiration for the people to be in faith with their church and with God. Okay. And I was I was so surprised when I read about at his funeral that he had 50 to 60,000 mourners 
And yet, of course, that was taken advantage of. I think there were some bombs that got hurled yes. in during the yes. funeral. Yes. And there were people, uh, priests from all over the world that came and uh, they did not respect that. The government and the military oh did not respect that. So everybody, people were risking their own life in, in a sense of martyrdom to just, go to the funeral. Yeah, yes. I think there were 40 people killed that I heard and like 200 that were injured on yes. top of that. Yes. Uh, yeah. Well, I, I think it's beautiful that the faith was still there. You still gathered to pray. You still persevered in some way. Um, what do you remember about that for yourself? At that point, probably it's like you shut down and you just want to shelter. Uh, I, at that point, had a little girl, a baby. And to me, it was just uh, stay home and protect, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. because you didn't know. I was in college and I was even scared to go to college, to mm. go to class. Yeah. Because of that reason. So all what I remember is that I was scared and I didn't want to go out. How long before, because I know that was part of the motivation for you to come to America. Um, yes. How long before you actually moved here then? Uh, the next year, oh. within eight months. Wow. Yes. Wow. My family, American family said, we're really scared for you, so we need you to come. And I said, yes, I, I, I can't even think of living here anymore you couldn't go i was scared to even go to the store sure Mm -hmm. so you had an american family is was that what do you mean when you say american family so in 1971 i came as an exchange student okay and i lived in des moines and we kept in contact with my family okay so uh by the time the war uh, had started and and all of this was happening they uh my american sister cindy flag said I, we are scared for you. We want you to come at least for the time that the war is going on. If after that you want to go home, that's fine. But uh, um, that's how we got back to Des Moines. And I still at night was scared to go out in Des Moines. Okay. That's yeah. how bad. Yeah. How deep that tr- went. Yes. Yeah. Did you, was there mass happening at all at any time during that in, in San Salvador when you were you know, having all this persecution, were they still during allowing, the Civil War? During the Civil War, were yeah. they still allowing mass in any way? Yes, yes, uh, that never stopped. Okay, they only persecuted people that were vocal against what the military okay. was doing. Um, and otherwise, you know, they they never interrupted mass or anything like that. That's actually yeah. really amazing. That's what I was thinking too. Is like you know you're afraid to go out, but yet they still had mass and you could go. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, well, that's probably was sustaining, too, to receive our Lord in the Eucharist. Yes. Yeah. You know, and, and just think, I'm thinking, you know, they talk about the seeds of martyrs and mm-hmm. what, what that does for people. And and St. Oscar Romero is actually the patron saint of martyrs. Yes. So, yeah, and, um, you know, I'm hoping we don't ever see a time where we see red martyrdom in this country, but it, it could be ahead of us. So yeah, we don't know. We right. don't know history can right. repeat itself, right? right? So you know? Saint Oscar Romero, pray for us. I love I love when you said the, the seedbed because what is it? The blood of the martyrs is the seedbed of the faith. Yes. Yeah. 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 So it's so beautiful. Yeah. Well, you're listening to Iowa Catholic Radio, and this is Catholic Women Now. We are talking to Rena Teske. And um, when we come back, we will be talking more about St. Oscar Romero. Um, Tell us a little bit about uh, when he was canonized and some other cool things about him. So stay tuned. You know, you can make a false God out of your own happiness. I love talking about how to align your thinking with the Word of God. How that leads to a positive attitude, a healthier emotional life, and helps you make a bigger impact on the world. And that's all good motivation for making positive changes in your life. But there's a fine line here, friends. If you engage the spiritual life too obsessed about your own happiness, you're going to end up less happy. I wrote a book called I Am. It's about replacing negative self-talk with the life-giving words that God has to say about you. But guess where it ends? On a call to worship and service. The book lands on getting you out of your head. Because in the end, we need to own our thinking, avoid negative ruts, and believe in our dignity, not because we're called to build lives that are all about our own happiness. It's because we're called to love. And that's the Catholic difference. That's the path to true happiness. For more from my book, I Am, visit RewriteYourName.com. I'm Chris Stefanik from Real Life Catholic. 
This is a Young Catholic Minute. Why is contraception wrong? In sex, the husband and wife give themselves to each other fully, freely, faithfully, and fruitfully, which is the kind of love that everyone longs for. No one says, I hope my wife cheats on me, or I want my soulmate to hide things from me. So why is I love you but not your fertility okay? Christ showed us true love by giving his whole life freely without reservation, never abandoning us even if it meant dying on a cross. This sacrifice gave us eternal life. If you've been listening, you might get where we're going. Sex is only loving when it's a free, total, faithful, and fruitful gift of self like Christ's love. In fact, in every Catholic marriage ceremony, the bride and groom vow to love each other in this very way. So you decide, do you want your marriage to reflect God's love? Or would you rather settle for something less? For more Young Catholic Minutes, go to youtube.com slash youngcatholic. Welcome back to Catholic Women Now here in Iowa Catholic Radio, where we're speaking with Rena Conestesca about St. Oscar Romero, who was a family friend of Rena's and her family growing up in San Salvador. So Rena, he was canonized as saint. Do you know the miracle? Can you tell us about the miracle that paved the way for his canonization? Yes, uh, there was a woman that was pregnant, and uh, the doctors did not give her uh, a chance, thinking that she was going to die because she had a lot of illness, uh, uh, water retention, different things that was happening to her. And so uh, the family decided to pray to San Romero and uh, for weeks. And then after that, she uh, came out of the illness, had her baby, everybody was fine. And so the doctors just said that that was a miracle. And the uh, Roman Catholic Church sent the medical staff to prove that that was uh, correct. And they said that indeed it was a miracle. Wow. Wow. What a blessing. And so St. Oscar Romero was actually canonized by Pope Francis in 2014, I believe. Yeah, something 2015. like 2015. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Was yeah. he canonized in Rome or was he canonized in San Salvador? Isn't that final canonizations are in Rome, I believe. I was just going to yeah. say Rome. Yeah. 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 I believe it was Rome. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So you have actually visited his grave. Yes. What was that like? Um, it was uh, very surreal. I just couldn't believe that I was standing in front of the grave where he was. Um, where he's uh, resting. And is and this in San Salvador? It's in San Salvador. It's in the cathedral. Okay. My husband and I went this year, and uh, we're very impressed because uh, they have pictures of when he died. And, I mean, it's gruesome, but, you know, you can see the pain of the people in the pictures on because he died the way he died yeah. at, mm-hmm. at that church. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, but uh, it was very calm, mm. just just surreal. You mm. found peace in being there. Yes, yes. Mm. You felt his presence with you. Yes, yeah, I did. I wow. did, and uh, it was uh, something that I would say everybody need to see. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, to be in the presence of you know different saints at their grave sites, and sometimes you know they're they're bodies if they're incorrupt is always just so powerful yes you know you feel like prayers get answered in those places it's that communion that Mm -hmm. you know the communion of saints not only just spiritually but just to have that you know just to have that tangible as far as that too and just Mm -hmm. there's a solidarity Mm -hmm. did you feel like a you know like you were like friends coming together in that moment yes because i know i knew him when he was when i was a little girl and i used to go to his mass on on sundays my dad used to take us because they were very good friends Mm -hmm. so uh throughout the years um we kind of were in contact especially my father and so to be there and think you know, through the time that I knew somebody that was going to be a saint. Yeah. Yeah. 
Wow. You touched his hand. Yes. You wow. shook his hand. Yes. You, you, wow. you, 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 yeah. So did you receive other sacraments from him? Like, were you, did you ever go to reconciliation? Yes. Or, um, first communion. First communion. Oh, wow. I did not do first communion with him, okay. but uh, communions on Sundays, yes. 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 And so, did he by chance marry you and your husband? No. Okay. No, no, no. He okay. was already uh, in a different Level. Job, yeah. Level. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I wanted him to baptize my, my daughter, Carla. Yes. But, uh, you know, it was in the turmoil time. And so yeah. it was, it was yeah. not possible. Yes. Oh, gosh. Well, Rena, what a, what a, a, a powerful time. What a powerful, um, moment to live through, a difficult moment to live through. And sometimes those moments that form us. Um, strengthen us too. Yes. What What have you gathered from? I mean, what What have you learned from him? Um, how has he changed your life? Well, I have learned that uh, you should always look not for the higher, but the lower, the poor people. He was such a uh, advocate for poor people, for uh, anybody that needed something. He always had a big smile. He always said hi to people and he was very humble. Mm. So that humility, humility, humility was uh, uh, something that I always think about it with what you were saying, yeah. you know, today with what happened to you coming into traffic. And to me, that was uh, some, the something that I always think about how um, humane he was, mm. how he helped the poor uh, young kids. He had a, a school for young kids where my dad used, my dad was a teacher, so he would go and give classes for free uh, to these kids. So he would walk from town to town. He did not want to have anybody to take him or anything because along the way he would meet people and he would say hi and see what Mm -hmm, they needed. mm -hmm. Wow. You know, I was thinking too, you know, we were talking earlier about his courage and his boldness. And do you ever ponder that a little bit at all for yourself? Yes. Yes. It's um, something that probably he, it was in the back of his mind, but he really never thought about it until he saw all this killing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and so it's uh, something that you got to say, okay, I need to do this Mm -hmm. for anybody, for anybody that needs something. You need to be bold about it. You know, I think it reminds me of the whole idea that um, you don't have the grace until you're in the moment and God gives you the grace when you need it. You know, you might not have it now, but when you get into that moment, he will give you the grace. The actual grace. And I just think that he is a Saint Romero Mm -hmm. is just a wonderful person to turn to and say, Help me to release, help, God, you know, bring that grace. Pray for me in this mm-hmm. moment. I need that strength that you have. And yes. just you pray for me. Yeah. So. Well, gosh, Rena, thank you so much yes, for being with us. You. We appreciate your telling us. Those are difficult moments and probably hard memories actually to go back to, but we sure appreciate you sharing those with us and teaching us what you've learned. Well, thank you for having me over. I really appreciate yeah. it. Yes. Yes. God You're, bless a you. You're a beautiful witness. You're a beautiful witness for God. Thank you. thank you. Well, shall we close in a prayer? Let's do that. Okay. Name the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh, good and gracious Father, we praise you and thank you for the gift of life, for the gift of the life of Saint Oscar Romero. And um, Lord God, we just thank you for all the martyrs who have gone ahead of us, who have witnessed to the truth of our faith. I just ask, Lord God, that those times that we come up into moments where we need grace um, to live the faith well, we just ask for that grace when we need it. And we trust you, Lord God, that you will give it to us. And we thank you, Lord, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Now go do impossible things with God. Today's Catholic Women. On the voice for Catholic Women Now. Iowa Catholic Radio. Do impossible things, you do impossible things, yeah.